Hi, I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supply. So today we're here to look at the Jung Sing F172. Now this is different to the F171 and Jung Sing use all these numbers to identify their bows. So it gets a bit confusing. In America, you'll see this bow called a different name. So whichever company is selling this product, they'll call it a name like a blackbird or a black wolf or a, some sort of name. So it comes in a box like this. You'll see the, this writing here is our writing. Um, let's have a look what's inside. Inside the box, just like so. You have two limbs, two limbs wrapped up ind independently. A riser. Some limb bolts, an allen key, and a string. So let's first off have a look at the riser. So this is the riser here. Now you'll see there's no spot here for sights. This is this is a traditional bow. Um, it's designed for shooting off the shelf. You can see the shelf here is rounded, so it's curved. And it's also curved here. Now this wood here, you can see the curve. So that there is the peak and it's coming down, it's curving there. So that there is the point where when you shoot a, um, a bear hair rest off the bow, this is where you'll be fitting it. Um, very small sight window. This is designed for instinctive shooting. The quality looks, it looks nice. Um, it's obviously laminated wood very fine laminations velvet here locating pin here now one thing I want to point out about this bow you can see here the limb there is different to this side so, you, so if you want to go from left-handed to right-handed you can't so if you're a shop and you're stocking 45 pounds and you've got a right-handed and you've got a customer who wants a 45 pound left-handed you just can't grab a left-handed bow because it needs to be a left-handed limb because of this. The bottom limb is symmetrical, but the top is not. So you can't just swap them around. Now, when I was setting up this bow, that's what I thought I could do. So I normally stock five right-handed bows and one left-handed. As soon as you sell that left-handed bow, the left-handed 45 pound bow, it's sold. You cannot use the 45 pound right-handed limbs on the left-handed riser because of the asymmetrical here. So the limbs, now this is obviously a longbow, so the limbs look to me to be quite nice. You can see the limb tips are quite fine. Um, very smooth. So some of the traditional bows that are cheaper, this is a cheaper traditional bow, they're a bit rough here and you get lots of string wear. Um, if you do get string wear on the limb tips, you just basically use fine sandpaper and just sand it out a little bit. But it's got a nice groove system. Um, you'll see the twin laminations in the limb. So you've got two fiberglass and a wood. Felt on the back. Poundage there. Now the poundage is measured at 28 inches. Um, so it just says there, 45 pounds at 28 inches. If you're drawing back greater than 28 inches, you're going to be shooting higher poundage. If you're drawing back less than 28 inches, you're shooting less poundage. So basically if you're shooting 30 pounds, 30 inches, and this is a 45 pound bow, you're probably drawing around 52 pounds. So, so let's assemble the bow. I'm just going to show you the asymmetrical top and bottom. You can see the difference. So that groove there stops this bow from being left-handed. So to assemble the um, F172, you basically put the limb in, you grab the washer, the bolt, and you screw it in. Now it comes with an Allen key, which is good. Yeah, you can see the, the fitting here, it's, it's nicely flush, um, nice on the edge, it's a nice finish overall. 
So one thing about Jung Sing is they produce lots of bows for lots of companies. So you may be shooting a Jung Sing bow and not even know it. Um, I know they're a fairly big, well, I want to say a fairly big company, I think they're a very big company as far as making bows. So the way these Chinese companies work, I'm saying these Chinese companies, um, a lot of Chinese companies is basically you go to them with a the design and you say, look, I want this bow built. You put your brand name on it and they produce it for you. So now when you're tightening these things up, they don't need to be real tight. Now you can't adjust the poundage on this bow through winding the limbs out. It's a set poundage. So this is the finish here. I can see there's a little bit of a lip there on the edge, but it's pretty good. Overall, I think the bow looks looks pretty nice. Now this is a reflex deflex design. So it's going to be a little bit faster than a traditional longbow. Um, so it's going to be a little bit faster, a little bit smoother. Now Jung Sing also produced this bow in a recurve version, which is called the F171. So instead of having longbow limbs, it's got recurve limbs. Same price, just a different bow. So this is their bow fully strung. Now what makes this bow a longbow versus a recurve? Now it depends on the association which you're dealing with, because you can see it's got a traditional recurve handle. But in feeter archery, um, I believe it's nothing's touching here on the limb tip. Um, so a recurve actually will touch there. Um, I believe that's it, but feeder may have, sorry, um, the other one, IFAA or whatever it is, may have a different rule. So check that. If you want to shoot competition with a longbow, check what the rules are. Because this bow is definitely going to be easier to shoot than a traditional longbow. I'm going to say a traditional English longbow. It's going to be easier for many reasons. One, the grip is easier than a flat longbow because it conforms with your hands. Um, the limbs are going to be better than a traditional longbow. Now, if you came here to watch me shoot really well, then you're going to be extremely disappointed because I shoot trad really, really bad. So the first thing, I'm shooting with carbon arrows with feathers. Feathers are going to shoot when you're shooting it off the shelf so much better than plastic veins. Plastic veins are not going to work with shooting off the shelf bows so you need feathers now these arrows are too stiff for this bow ideally I'd have a knocking point here when I shoot it but we just want to get a feel for how this bow is so to start with this is 45 pounds at 28 inches which is about what I shoot for target archery so to start with what you're interested in is quality so you look at the quality of the limbs what do they look like what's the overall finish and i think this bow looks pretty good now the next thing you want to check with quality is how this bow draws so it starts off here and it's nice and it's building so my draw length is 28 and a half to the front of my face so 28 and a half is just there and this bow is is comfortable at, at 28 and a half so let's draw this back further So with the cheaper bows, they start to stack. So they build up the poundage really quickly. This bow shows no sign at all whatsoever of stacking. It is nice and smooth the entire draw cycle. So when people come into my shop and they go, this bow's really good, and I've heard really good reports about this bow. I'm not referring to this bow, but I'm going to refer to another bow, a Samex Sage. I say, try it out, try out the draw cycle, and then compare this bow, because this bow just, there's no comparison. This bow feels really good. I'm going to say the Samic Sage is built for a price budget. Um, so when they go, it's really good. They haven't probably compared lots of bows on the market and their shop may not have lots of bows. Like I've got maybe 50 traditional bows in the shop. This is good. And the price point is really, really good. So let's have a shot and let's see what sort of noise it makes. I think the noise will be pretty good. So when I shoot trout, I just lie the bow on the side a little bit encourages the bow to sort of lean. Now you can't do that when you're shooting sights. If you lean the bow when you're shooting sights, you're actually moving your sight to the left or right. But when you shoot trad, you're looking straight down the arrow. Um, and yeah, basically taking a guess where it's gonna land. If you shoot that way, that's the way I shoot trad.
And you can see my level of accuracy is just terrible. I can shoot an entire field round and not hit anything with the tr traditional bow. It's just, it's just appalling. In fact, I find trad really, really hard to shoot. I mean, there's no stress with shooting trad because you can shoot the whole day and not expect to hit anything. That's <laughs> so true. You, you can literally shoot an entire round and not expect to hit, to hit the target. But to me, that there's no sound. The bow is so quiet. Now, the recurve version of this is going to be faster to shoot as far as speed. Uh, but this, the longbow version, is going to be quieter because you've got no limb slap. You've got no string hitting the limbs. So this bow is really quiet if you can sort of hear the noise it's making. Oh, there we go. One more arrow. Finally hit the target. <laughs> traditional <laughs> now you can shoot really good with traditional archery I'm just not one of those people I'm going to go back to the Howard Hills days in the Robin Hood movie where he can shoot um, people people off horses with foam as they as they ride past him with foam blocks he can Robin Hood the arrow three times I am not one of those people with, with a tradition with a traditional bow um, but it's still fun to shoot price point on this bow about $180 it's really well built feels beautiful to shoot now comparing this bow to a thousand dollar long bow so the, the bows I'd compare it to would be probably the Predator um, I'm going to say the Rogue Takedown, um, which is $1,000. It's the, literally, it's one of the few takedown longbows I can think of, the Predator Rogue. The Predator Rogue is going to set you back about $1,000. This is going to set you back about $180. Um, the Predator make a nice bow. The wood is going to be nicer. It's going to be nicer finished. It's prob the Predator is probably, I'm going to say probably, has better quality fiberglass in the limbs. It's a nicer bow. The Predator is made in the US. This is made in China. So it depends on how much money you've got, how much you value things, how much you shoot. Um, but for me, bang for the buck and how much I'm going to shoot this bow, this is amazing value. Um, it's just beautiful to shoot and I could take this down to a target range and shoot quite well with it. Now one thing I'm going to talk about is um, poundage, selecting the poundage of the bow. When you select the poundage for either hunting or target archery, hunting you generally shoot higher than you would for target archery because it's only one shot. For target archery you shoot lower because basically you're shooting more arrows and you're going to fatigue. It's up to you to decide what poundage you're going to shoot. I started when I started shooting recurve, tradition, target recurve, I started on about 32 pounds, I then went to 36, I'm now up to 42. 42 I'm still struggling with a bit, but I still want to get higher in poundage. So, you know, basically I always suggest if you can get a bow to try, try it. You may find that you fatigue too quick, in which case you need a lighter one. If you're finding it too easy, then you'll need a higher one. Now, can you buy replacement limbs? Yes, you can. But I'm going to say it's probably not worthwhile because of the price of the bow, it's just best to buy another bow. And when I say that, you'll get half price for this bow when you sell it. The limbs are going to cost you half the price, a bit more, bit over half the price of the bow. So it's generally better just to buy another bow than buy a set of 40 or 45 pound limbs for this bow if you want to change poundage. Now, the other bow I want to show you is from the same company. Now this is the deluxe version of the same bow. So basically the handle is exactly the same. Same design, the limbs are the same design. This is just... That, that limb's going to be sold cheaper. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is the deluxe version of the bow. You can see it's got the laminate down the center. Um, so there's more work in this bow, so a little bit more expensive. I'm going to guess the price of this riser. You can see the strip down there. So there's more work in this riser. I might as well pick up the limb I dropped. Now this is the limb I, <laughs> this is the limb I dropped. Now you'll see the limb, um, this is the finish of it, here. So the limb, instead of having the black fiberglass, it's got the clear, clear coat. The fiberglass looks pretty good. Now you see the mark there. That wasn't for me dropping it. I find the clear, lamin clear, lamin oh, clear laminate just there. Clear laminate tends to do this. It tends to have the little, it had, tends to have little lines which come down it. There's no crack. Now, even the Martins tend to do that. So, it just depends if you like the clear fiberglass. I do like the clear fiberglass, but bear in mind that it can develop these little, what look like cracks um, in the clear. The black doesn't seem to do that. But overall, that's the bow. I think the bow on price. Sorry, it's really cold outside. <laughs> Blowy. Um, I think on price, the clear one is. I'm going to guess about thirty dollars more. Not a lot more expensive. Um, and the other thing you get with the clear, see here, just on the edge. Even the thousand dollar Martins do it. So just on the edge here, if the gluing is not perfect. It comes in a slightly different color, but to me that's perfectly acceptable. Um, like I said, the Martin thousand um, dollar Savannas and all that, they have this all through the limbs. So I think the gluing on this is actually pretty good. Um, the limb tips are as good as I've seen. I think the overall quality of the bow is pretty much as good as I've seen. That's a pretty nice bow to shoot. So, and for the price, you just can't go wrong. I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies, that's the Jung Sing F172, I'm not sure what the clear one's called, I don't even think I've listed it yet, and I don't know what the code is for it, but it's there on the website, check it out. I'm Stephen Han from Archery Supplies, enjoy archery, and the more you shoot, the better you'll shoot, especially with traditional archery, because it's so darn hard to shoot, um, and just enjoy it. Thanks for watching, bye.